Hello everyone, I'm Barbara and I'm going to be uh, doing a series of videos for you all to help you out with some ideas to do with the children you're looking after. So some ideas for activities and things to do after school for all ages. Um, so a little bit about myself first. So I'm an English language teacher uh, and I teach children as well as adults. I've been running also activity groups for children, um, also, uh, play groups, for example, with, for mothers and uh, young children, preschoolers, but also after school clubs for older children as well. I've been doing those for many years, so I have plenty of activities and ideas to share with you. And I've also been running music classes as well for children. Um, so I'm going to share some songs with you as well later on. Okay, so um, the first in this series of videos will be um, about autumn. So the theme will be autumn time or the fall as it's sometimes called. It's a really great idea to use the seasons and also the um, celebrations that happen during that season to give you ideas and inspiration for activities with the children. And also the kids will really benefit um, from more understanding about the seasons and what's going on around them. So let me uh, share the screen with you and you can see what we're going to do today. So the first thing I'd like to point out is some vocabulary, some words in English, which may help you when you're discussing um, autumn or look at when you're out and about in, in, in nature with the children. Um, these are of course in English and it, it will depend what the main language is that you use with the children you're looking after it depend uh, whether or not you use these maybe you will translate them into another language um, that's fine if you're looking after dutch children and their main language is dutch um, you might have some confusion with some of these words because some words in english and dutch are very similar but sometimes have different meanings so for example, acorn in English is what you can see here, the first picture on the top left. Um, it's the, the little seeds from an oak tree. But the word for a squirrel in Dutch is actually acorn. <laughs> so it can be very confusing for Dutch kids when learning English. But usually if you do it with a picture or in context when you're out and about, it will really help them to, to understand those words. Okay, of course, there are many more than this, especially with the animals. You can do lots of games with these, for example, with animals and what they eat. Um, you could get a, a selection of different foods, for example, like mushrooms or berries or acorns and pine cones, and then a selection of animals. And you can get them to match up which animal eats which food. And you, they can use their words for that as well. Like, for example, the hedgehog eats the worm or the fox um, is, is looking for mushrooms or something like that. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next screen. You can also use autumn activities to ask the children about their day and what they like to do during the autumn time. Many rainy days, of course, and a lot of kids like to splash in puddles. Um, you can also use pictures of autumn activities like these, apple picking, for example, or playing in the leaves. You can take a picture like this, make sure it's one that has plenty of detail to describe, give the picture to the child you're looking after, get them to describe what's going on in the picture while you can't see the picture, and then you will draw what the child describes and then they can see how well they described it from what you've drawn. You can also switch around, of course, and um, the, the, the child would be doing the drawing and you would be doing the describing. Yeah? So the ch there are three children, they're throwing the leaves into the air. One of the children on the right side is bigger. This is great for their language skills. If they struggle with this, of course, you can just discuss it together. And they can also use their own, uh, their native language to describe the picture as long as they're having fun and as long as they're um, communicating with you. That's the main goal. Okay, so the next thing to look at here is about sorting, sorting activities. Um, these are great for all ages. And of course, the level of detail that you do with your sorting activity 
and how you do it will depend on the age of the children. You can definitely adapt, change an activity to suit the age of the child you're looking after, um, or maybe make two. If you've got more than one child you're looking after, do a simpler version and, a, and, a, and an, another version for an older child. Here you can see on the top left, uh, you have some reading practice as well as the colors. So it's written on the top. I would usually use lowercase letters for young kids, capital letters or uppercase letters. They usually learn later at school. So it's better to start with actually lowercase. So I wouldn't write it like this if I was trying to teach reading through this activity. I would use small letters. Um, but yeah, the idea is that the apples are cut out from pieces of paper, different colors, and the children have to stick the apples either into the right groups here in the middle section in blue, um, it's done as a graph or an array, which is great for their mathematical skills as well. And you can use a lot of nice words and vocabulary to ask questions about this afterwards. For example, um, which kind of apple has the least? Which kind of apple are there most of? Yes, yeah, so there, there are most red apples. There are the least yellow apples. There are only three. Yeah, and uh, in the, the green apples are in the middle, uh, they have four, for example. Yeah, so there's lots of um, mathematical discussions you can use about this. You can take away or add uh, apples together as well once they've sorted them out. You can see in this one as well, the children have actually printed using paint and a cut apple. They've printed the apples themselves first, which is a great way to start as well. Kids love paint, they love getting messy. The idea of using an apple as a tool for painting uh, will be quite interesting for them and fun as well. On the left side, you can see um, they've used cereal hoops. You can use beads or pom-poms or anything really to, to sort out and stick on the different colors. Kids can actually do this from around even one and a half years, one and a half, two years. They start to learn how to sort. And the more activities like this that you do with them, the better they will become at this. And it's a great skill for young kids. Um, so any, any age between sort of one and a half to uh, right up to about six years old, you can do these activities with them. Um, a simpler one here with colored baskets for the younger kids as well. Um, another great activity for teaching what is autumn time, what is the fall, is you can get a whole load of uh, items, nature items uh, to do with the autumn. For example, pine cones, um, some uh, conkers or chestnuts, leaves. And you can take other items from other seasons, perhaps like winter gloves or summer sunglasses and all other things, other items. And the kids have to sort out which items belong to the autumn time. Yeah, and put them all in one area and the other items in a different area. Um, for really young kids, it's really about the sensory activity. You have feeling and touching and smelling. Here in the top right of the picture, um, I've, I took some herbs, different herbs with strong smells and put them in the different bowls. Um, and my daughter was able to, to smell and discover the different uh, the herbs and we just chatted about it and it was a nice experience for her when she was really young for a sensory time. And here you can see also um, the little boy is just exploring and feeling the, the items that are laid out there. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, with young kids, they love to cut and stick, <laughs> of course, with glue. So um, in the top left of the picture there, uh, you can either just have the children make a collage of the items that you found. If you go for an autumn walk, they usually love to gather up treasures. They find leaves, sticks, all these kinds of things. Um, and you can just make collage if they're young, young enough. They can just stick it on whatever way they want. Um, here I've used actually paper squares and I drew out a tree. Uh, and the kids could stick on the leaves the little pieces of paper like leaves. If you've got more time, you can make them into leaf shapes as well. But I was doing an awful lot of these, so I just used squares. I had so many kids to do it with. <laughs> but if you've got more time, then yeah, leaf shapes are good. Um, for younger kids, if you want to also make an animal, it's a good, uh, good idea to start with an outline of a picture. Here I've got a hedgehog. You can see 
um, and the kids would just stick the leaves onto the hedgehog to decorate it. But with older kids, you probably won't need the picture. They can do it themselves. Look, we've got foxes here made out of leaves, just the face, and we've got a whole body here. And um, on, the, on the bottom side there, you have a game which is really popular with older children. So uh, from six plus, I would say, over six years old. Um, this is a, a game called Conquers. It's a really big tradition um, in both the USA and uh, Great Britain. And uh, what it is, is you, you, you have teams or, or two people at least. Um, you tie your conquer to a string, which is this here. And one person has to hit the other person's conquer and see who's, who's breaks first, <laughs> okay? Um, it's really important to note the way the boys are standing here. They're not facing each other. If they were facing each other and doing this game, it can get quite dangerous with fingers and also with faces because the conquers can sometimes unexpectedly go in different directions. So be careful, do it this way uh, as it is in the picture with uh, the, the aiming of the hitting away from the children. It's much safer. Okay. Um, if you have more than one, uh, more than two kids involved, you can do like a, like a league, conquer league and keep it going over a few weeks even. Uh, whose conquer will last the longer? Who will be the champion? You get points for winning a match, for example. Can be really fun and they get quite into it after a while. Okay, the next activity is about a music tree. This is something that I did with one of my music classes when I took them into the woods and we did uh, song time in the woods. Um, I had quite a lot of instruments that I was able to tie to the tree um, in the example here. Uh, and then the kids took sticks or beaters and they were able to just make sounds and enjoy walking around the tree and uh, hitting the, uh, the sounds as they went. Um, but you can also, if you don't have a lot of instruments, you can even use things from your kitchen. Yeah, spoons, old spoons, for example, forks, this kind of thing, pieces of metal, like little metal um, kitchen utensils, for example. I would recommend a trip to the market. If you go to the secondhand market at any point, you might see things like this in the bottom left, very cheaply for sale uh, that you can use to make your music tree. Just one word of advice, um, if, if you want to minimize the work, if it's not too much work, it's better to have it in your garden or in the, the family's garden uh, where it's their own tree. Because otherwise, if you're taking everything into the forest, it takes quite a long time to set up the music tree. And then of course you have to take it all down again <laughs> to get home. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily doing, do, do it in a public place. I would prefer to do it in the garden um, to save on the work. Of course, I had a class, I had a large group. So it was worthwhile doing it in the forest. But normally your garden would be great with the kids. Um, other things you can do in the forest or, if, or in the garden that all, all children love is to like go camping, have a woodland adventure. Uh, as soon as we think of fire and campfires, we think, oh gosh, no, I wouldn't do that with the young children. It's far too dangerous. Um, they might get burned or something. So instead, I took a fire pit uh, and cut up colored paper. This is tissue paper, very thin paper, which I got very cheaply uh, in action shop. You can get it in a, very, uh, a lot of different places. Take it in colors that are associated with fire, yellow, red, orange, cut it up in strips and put some sticks in as well. And it looks great. And you can even put a flashlight or torch inside to make it glow. And it's really nice. And <laughs> even though it's not a real fire, the kids love it. And we did a lot of activities around the campfire. These young kids, we didn't want to give them sweets. We didn't use marshmallows. We used pieces of banana uh, on sticks, which they enjoyed uh, using like marshmallows. Also on the bottom left here, you can see uh, like the idea for a teddy bear's picnic in the woods. Uh, so you, if you've got a bit more uh, like equipment or something, you could take a pop-up tent, maybe even a little folding camping table and chairs. If you've got somewhere that's close by that you can easily transport the things, it's a great activity. You can spend a few hours there, um, bring some food and do some songs that we're gonna uh, look at together in a moment. The kids of all ages will enjoy that, um, but we're gonna look at how, how you can adapt it for older kids in a moment. Um, 
Here you can see, for example, bobbing for apples. We've got a young kids version and an older kids version. Young kids don't really like to put their face in the water. So use like little fishing nets, for example, or like a sieve from the kitchen, you know, for draining the water, you can use that as well. Um, but the older kids love it. They'll stick their heads right in, no problem. <laughs> the idea is not to use the hands, of course. They have to get the apples out with their, with their mouths only. Yeah? Um, to make it a competition, they'll enjoy it even more. Like who can do it the quickest? And we'll time them how many seconds to get an apple. They really enjoy trying to improve their time as well. So um, just move this out of the way for a second. Here we have some campfire games. And these are for the older children to keep them amused if you decide to do a camping trip. Um, it's worthwhile noting that if you're going to plan a little camping trip with older kids, get them involved uh, in the planning. Get them to decide where they want to do it. Maybe even look at a map. Um, also, what they need to take. So the, the game, first game in blue here, you can see, is about that, is about what to take. It's kind of a discussion game, um, especially if they're going with friends as well, or perhaps if there are more than, um, more than two siblings in the like brothers and sisters in the family that you're looking after, this would work really well. Um, just move myself out the way here. Uh, so the kids have to start by writing down 10 things that they would need to survive in the woods. Uh, so they need to think of these items themselves and they shouldn't share it with other people. They should just write their own list. Now we're gonna pair them up. They compare lists with uh, another person. And then they want, a disaster happens. You can say that something has happened to one of the backpacks. Maybe it's fallen in the river. And now they have to choose 10 items between them. So it's like a negotiation. And they have to convince or persuade their uh, brother or sister or friend that the items on their list are most important and why. So they can really get a lot of uh, talking time out of this. Um, and then, of course, the same thing should happen again and again, uh, depending on how many kids there are. Another disaster happens, backpack falls off a cliff, for example. Now they only have five items between them. They need to negotiate which five items to take. And then in the end, only three items can come uh, to the camping trip and they have to say which ones are most important. This is not about packing their real backpacks. This is like a word game, a, a, a speaking game to decide what they would take if they needed to survive, what's most important. Um, we also have another discussion game in green here. It's based on the, the popular game, Have You Ever? These are yes, no questions that you can make in advance. Write them down before the game to help the kids out because sometimes they just can't think of a good question. So it's better to have them written down. Um, you sit in a circle, the, the questions go in the middle, and uh, the first person, usually the oldest person first, because they're more likely to understand the game, will ask the, the first question to the person on their right. Um, for example, uh, have you ever got lost in the woods? The person should answer truthfully, not make it up, okay? So if they say, no, I haven't, then they pass the question on to that person. And they would say, have you ever got lost in the woods to the next person? And the next person and the next person until someone says, yes, I have. And then that question goes out of the game and the next question can start with the person that answered, yes, I have. Okay, so the idea is just to get through all the questions. It's a great game for language skills. Um, present perfect tense here, have you ever? Really nice <laughs> practice for you guys and also for the kids. <laughs> okay. Um, Autumn treasure hunts are great for all ages. If you can have a list uh, beforehand of all the things that you think they might find in the woods, for example, a red leaf or a conker or um, uh, a worm, for example, you have a list, you can use pictures as well if, if the kids can't read yet. You give them a little basket or a bucket and they need to find all the things on the list as quickly as they can. If you want to make it a competition, you can have a winner for the first one to complete the list. Otherwise, you can just do it as a fun activity with, with no winners. It's also fine. Um, of course, if you have a real fire for older kids, 
it's great to make campfire food. You can look these up online in red here, what they are. S'mores, baked bananas, hot dogs, of course, are things you can do on the campfire. You can cook on the campfire, um, usually with involving melted chocolate. <laughs> yeah, so you can Google these and, uh, and see how to make them, but it's very simple. And um, yeah, the kids would enjoy that if you have a real fire. Um, oh, lost our activity there. Just go up one. Uh, in pink, we have a backpack memory game. Okay, this is great fun to do. You can do it in a lot of different situations, not only in the woods. <clears throat> the first person would say, I went to the woods and I brought, and then they think of an object, for example, a flashlight. The next person, I went to the woods and I bought, brought a flashlight, and they think of another item, some rain boots maybe. Third person, I went to the woods and I brought, brought a flashlight, some rain boots and some marshmallows. The list goes longer and longer each time. And uh, they basically have to remember all the items that were said before their item and think of a new one as well. So it gets more and more difficult as it goes on. If someone can't remember the list or gets it in the wrong order, makes a mistake, they're out. And then you continue until there is only one person left. Okay. Uh, the last one down at the bottom in yellow is hot potato. You can check the rules again for this online if you like. Um, hot potato is a game where you, they, they pass the, a ball usually, but you can use pine cones as well very quickly. Like it's hot, 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 hot potato, hot potato. They pass it around. If there's only two, they just pass it back and forward. And in the meantime, you would sing hot potato, hot, hot, hot potato, hot potato, hot, hot, potato hot potato and you keep going while they pass it back and forward and then when you stop whoever is holding the hot potato is out <laughs> okay so let's move on to the the next part uh, so these are some songs for the autumn activities that you can do around the campfire or um, in the room or in the garden whatever you're doing your autumn uh, activities Okay, some general song tips. It can be hard to get kids to join in with songs, especially older children. Um, so you really need to make it a bit structured. Have it as a circle time where they're sitting around, not just like going around doing other things in their room as usual. Make a special place, put some cushions or something around and uh, you would sit a little bit higher up, maybe on a chair so that you can um, be in control of the group and the situation. With younger kids, it's really great to have the same start. Each time you're about to do a circle song time, start in the same way, and then it will get them familiar. They know what's coming. They're more likely to listen and be engaged. I used to always start with a hello song and then um, a warm-up song. So you can do any hello song before this, but I've put the warm-up song in here because it's great to change the warm-up song depending on um, what the, the theme of your day is. So with, for example, if you were gonna do a Halloween song time, you would, you would uh, add in some, some voices at the end here with Halloween. So I'm gonna show you how this one goes. Um, it's a repeat song, call and repeat, which is the best way of kids to, to get kids to join in with songs because they don't know the words yet. But if they're repeating what you've just said, they're much more likely to, to join in and sing. So you would start, have you brought your high voice? And the child would say, yes, I've brought my high voice. And then you would say, have you brought your low voice? Yes, I've brought my low voice. Have you brought your quiet voice? The children, yes, I've brought my quiet voice. Have you brought your loud voice? Yes, I've brought my loud voice. Have you brought your gorilla voice? Yes, I brought my gorilla voice. Have you brought your robot voice? Yes, I've brought my robot voice. And then you would add in whatever uh, themed ones you're doing for the day. For example, have you brought your spooky voice? Or have you brought your monster voice? <laughs> so these are good ones for Halloween. Yeah, and then you would finish with, then we're ready to begin. And then you can start your song time. So it takes a few repetitions before the kids will really start to join in, especially younger kids. They don't often sing 
but that doesn't mean that they're not learning from the activity or that they're not enjoying it. Very young children will just absorb. They'll sit and they'll watch and they'll listen and they'll take it all in, but they won't necessarily sing it during the song time. They might sing it later on, or you might hear a few words of the song later on when they're doing other things. So the first songs in yellow on the left are for the younger children um, about autumn time. <clears throat> The more you put into the song, the more actions, the more um, things that you have with you, the more enthusiasm, the more the kids will enjoy it. I sometimes use scarves for this. What I mean is very thin material. Um, let me see if I can find, no, I haven't got a picture. But I used to have a, very different, a lot of different colored scarves that I could use for this um, that float in the air. So you can throw them around and they're like the leaves. You could also use leaves, why not, as well. So it goes like this. What has happened to the leaves, to the leaves, to the leaves? What has happened to the leaves? Leaves are falling from the trees. Was it that somebody sneezed? Ah, 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 and then you can throw leaves around. Somebody sneezed, somebody sneezed. Was it that somebody sneezed? Oh, Is that what happened to the leaves? <laughs> so the more you repeat it, the more they will join in. Um, adults don't usually like to repeat songs more than once. They get bored. But with young kids, they love it. The more you repeat it, the better. You can do it like three, four, five times a day, and they'll still really enjoy it um, even, even more. The next one um, is a great one for actions, especially if you have a pile of leaves with you. You can do this one outside in the park. Okay. Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down, falling down. Autumn leaves are falling down from the trees. Make a pile and jump right in jump right in, jump right in. And that's when you would make a pile of leaves and jump into them. Make a pile and jump right in. Thank you, trees. <laughs> so they should enjoy that one with the jumping into the leaves. And then of course the autumn colors are something else to talk about uh, at autumn time. So this one goes like this. Red and yellow, green and brown, all the leaves come tumbling down. Days are nippy, nights are clear, summer's over, autumn's here. <laughs> okay, then we've got the songs for the older kids over in blue. Okay, so uh, these are super for kids, I would say around six plus, and especially if you're around a campfire. If you're not around the campfire, get something in their room, maybe like a den, put a sheet over, make it a bit, you know, give it a bit of, make a bit of fun about it. Um, we wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do a, a normal hello song with younger kids. This is more of a cool hello song. Again, it's call and repeat. So you say and they say back. This one goes like this. Say hello, say hi, say hey. And then the kids go say hello, say hi, say hey. We sing this song to start the day. We sing this song to start the day. Don't be shy, let's hear you sing. Don't be shy, let's hear you sing. Come on, and then whatever the child's name is. Come on, David, do your thing. And then David would then come into the middle and he has to do like a cool move. Maybe he, you know, does some dab or something that he wants to do. And uh, so as you call them up, they would do their thing. You can make it really silly as well when it's your turn when they call your name, do something crazy, like blah, 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 and they'll find it really funny. They'll be more likely to do it. You can call the kids' names more than once if they're enjoying it, you know, add, get sillier and sillier actions as it goes. Like, come on, Barbara, do your thing. I'll be like, <laughs> and they find it really funny. <laughs> okay, uh, the next one is uh, from SpongeBob. So the kids should like this. There's a YouTube video of this if you Google it, SpongeBob's Campfire Song. It's quite funny. Uh, so it's one that just gets faster and faster, basically. It goes like this. You can also do this with clapping, like moving the hands as well onto like their lap and then the next person's lap gives it a bit more interest as well. 
Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. Our C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. If you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. But it'll help if you just sing along. Bum, bum, bum. Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. Our C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. If you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. But it'll help if you just sing along. Bum, bum, bum. Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. Our C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. If you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. It'll help if you just sing along. Bum, bum, bum. And you can keep going for as long as you can until it's you can't hear the words anymore. <laughs> okay, so faster and faster. Kids usually, older kids will really enjoy that one. All right, um, let's move on then from campfire activities to Halloween activities. So it's nice that we can do this video um, for you guys just before Halloween because I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with the kids this weekend, maybe or on Friday, doing uh, Halloween activities. This year, of course, the main activity, trick or treating, is not really very um, possible. So uh, it's nice to do other activities at home so that the kids don't feel they're missing out. Of course, there are thousands of Halloween and uh, craft and party food ideas online. So I didn't put crafts and party foods in this uh, video because I know that you guys can just search with the children you're looking after. Uh, search for them yourselves and see what interests them and make some crafts together. Of course, a pumpkin too. Don't forget your pumpkin. It's a good idea to draw the face on your pumpkin first with pen, especially with younger kids. Just leave it with pen. Um, and then for the older kids to cut it out just before Halloween. Because if you cut the pumpkin, carve it too early, it starts to get rotten and smell and go bad really quickly. So I usually leave my pumpkin whole, draw the face for the first week before Halloween, and then just before, cut it out um, to get the face. Okay, once you've made some crafts, um, some Halloween crafts, it's a great idea to hide them around the house and make a haunted house. And you can make a spooky game of hide and seek with this, and it's really fun. Um, if the kids are having trouble finding some of the things, you can do... Uh, sound effects to help them find it. For example, when they're getting near to where the ghost is hidden, you might go or something like that, <laughs> or get louder as they get closer. Something to help them find it and make it more fun as well. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment some games uh, that you can do with from the British Council as well. So I'll show that um, in a moment because it's not inside this presentation, but we'll look at the website um, at the end. Um, for some games here and activities. Worksheets, I find that children, if, it's, if they've had a day at school, they're not so keen to do worksheets and things like activities where they have to write or match things. They, they kind of had enough at that, of that at school, I find. So I tend to choose fun, fun games instead for after school time. Um, so here we have some uh, sensory ideas which are about the feel uh, for younger children, but you can make it into a game or a challenge for older children. Uh, slime is of course very Halloween-y. I've tried many different recipes over the years um, using glue, uh, borax, all sorts of things. I found that the best one by far was just to make jello or use gelatine and water. There are several reasons for this. With young children, they often put their fingers near their mouths and jello, jello or gelatine is, is not gonna harm their health, but something like borax is. And borax can also irritate the skin. And even though one time I used gloves, the children just got in a big mess, it was sticky everywhere. And also it tends to be too solid or not turn out well. So I would use gelatine. It takes a bit longer to prepare because you have to do it the night before so that it can have time to set. But um, if you follow the instructions on the gelatine packet, it should be quite easy. You can add coloring to make it look more slimy. And you would put little plastic um, bugs or spiders or bats or anything Halloween-y inside the jello. When it sets, they then just have to feel and pick it out. Young kids, you would just let them get their hands in and, and have fun with it. Older kids, make it into a game. Get a blindfold, wrap it around their eyes so they can't see what they're doing. 
get your phone to time them, stopwatch, yeah? And uh, the challenge is how quickly can they find all of the creatures trapped in the slime? And then you can make it like a competition, you know, who finds it the fastest. Same here with the spaghetti and the eyeballs. Be warned, this is a very messy activity. Uh, I didn't think that the spaghetti would be so uh, sticky, but actually it, it makes a big mess. I would never do it on your carpet or floor, for example. Always put something down. It's much more messy than you might think. Um, and also don't overcook the spaghetti. Yeah? Cook it for a short time so that it's more solid. Um, and then you can hide eyeballs like I did here inside. You can just use white ping pong balls and put draw eyes on them as well if you want. So um, another uh, two activities on the right here. Uh, here it was pumpkins, uh, little rolling pumpkins that you can find anywhere. You can also use balloons um, and broomsticks. You can either make your own or get a broomstick as part of a Halloween costume and they have a race. How quickly can they sweep the pumpkin from one side of the room to the other? or in the garden as well. It's quite a fun thing to do as a race for older kids. Um, here you can see uh, it's like it's a bit like the party game pin the tail on the donkey, very similar, but you can have put the stake on the vampire <laughs> and the one who gets it closest to the heart is the winner. I found actually when I did this game I preferred to use a balloon for the heart and uh, with older kids I, I gave them like a little uh, sharp stick and they had to actually like poke it where they thought the, the, the balloon was and try and pop the balloon. So that was really fun for the older ones. Younger ones, I would stick with the paper sticking on the stake. It's, it's a little bit safer and easier for them. Here in the, in the top uh, of this picture, uh, we have a Halloween story. And this is a really great thing to do for kids, I would say age maybe one up to seven or eight. And the more you put into the preparation and the voices and the enthusiasm with the story, the, the better the kids will enjoy it. Um, this is a Halloween story called Room on the Broom. You could choose any other storybook uh, to, connected with Halloween, maybe from the library or that your family has. Um, <clears throat> and uh, here you can see there are some props. So these are things that will help you with the story. It really makes the story come alive. You can use them to act out the story. Yeah, so the witch had a, uh, had a cat and a long pointed hat and you would put on the hat and long ginger hair that she wore in a plait <laughs> and add voices as well for the different characters. It's a good idea to practice. If you're going to do this with the kids that you um, are looking after, maybe and their friends, a group, do try to practice so that you know what is coming. You can practice the pronunciation of some of the words. Uh, make sure you know who is talking at different times so you can get voices, like have a different voice for each character if you can. It makes it much more fun for the kids and they're not expecting it. So they, they really start to listen more. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on to some Halloween songs. Okay, so um, with this first one, you can definitely make uh, what I have here is a drum. Okay, so the first song is called In the Hairy Scary Castle and it's a great idea to make your drum first. It's just made from a tub. You can decorate it as well with the kids. These songs are suitable for all ages. So I would say right from the really small ones up to the older ones, this, this is a great thing to do. Um, so the first song is In the Hairy Scary Castle. Imagine you've got your drum with you. The drum really makes this song special because the different sounds that you get um, will help you to create the atmosphere. I'm going to move over a little bit to another area so I can show you as well uh, what I have prepared. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> to get the, the Halloween atmosphere, I've made here a little circle of spooky friends to join the party. I've just used old Halloween costumes here um, and stuff them with clothes to make like Halloween party guests. <laughs> okay, so uh, the family that you're working with will probably have some old costumes that are too small, maybe from previous years. And if you can find those and just stuff them with paper or other clothes, you can have a really cool like song time with other spooky friends uh, joining in. You can also put the clothes on teddies, for example, if you have big teddies as well. 
uh, yeah, normally <laughs> I have a lot more stuff with me. Um, I usually I, I have uh, I have hundreds of Halloween costumes and also a lot of instruments. I'm in the middle of a house move at the moment, unfortunately, so I don't have a lot with me here at the moment. But you get the idea for what you can do with the costumes and balloons, use masks to make the heads. So I've got my drum here ready. I'm just using this one just now. Um, so the Hairy Scary Castle uh, is all about the rhythm. Okay, so it goes like this. In the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary castle, where the ghosts go. <laughs> in the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary castle, where the spiders go. Scuttle, 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 and the ghosts go. <laughs> in the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary. Spiders go, and the ghosts go. <laughs> in the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary castle, in the hairy scary castle, where the skeletons go. Creep, 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 and the wind goes. Whoosh. And the spiders go, scuttle, 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 scuttle. And the ghosts go. <laughs> so that's a great one for rhythm, and you can do it as many times as you want. And try and get everybody to boot at the same time. Okay, the next one um, is a spooky song you can do just to create the atmosphere. It goes like this It's Halloween, it's Halloween. Where witches fly and goblins scream, a woo, a woo, a woo. It's Halloween, it's Halloween. A ghost will come and haunt your dreams, a woo, a woo, a woo. <laughs> if you have younger kids, don't overdo the spooky atmosphere. Keep a smile on your face and try and do it a bit fun. Maybe you can hug them when you woo. Um, it keeps it lighthearted and they don't get scared. <laughs> okay, the next two songs are lap songs. And by that, I mean, this is songs that you would do with the kids on your knee. If you have bigger kids and you can't put them on your knee, then get them to do with the, uh, a teddy especially like a spooky teddy on their own knee. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down for this. So this is like Row Row the Boat. Imagine I've got the child on my lap here, but it's a spooky version of Row the Boat. It goes like this. Row, row, row the boat down the spooky stream. If you see a vampire, don't forget to scream. If they're small enough, you can lift them up. If not, just give them a jiggle. <laughs> row, row, row the boat down the spooky lake. If you see a ghost, don't forget to shake. <laughs> row, row, row the boat down the spooky creek. If you see a skeleton, don't forget to shriek. <laughs> and then you just repeat it as many times as they want. You'll probably find they want it a lot of times. <laughs> the next one is also a lap song. It goes like this. A ghost, a witch, and a skeleton. 
went trick-or-treating one by one. The ghost fell off and the witch fell off, but the skeleton went galloping, galloping, galloping on. A ghost, a witch and a skeleton went trick-or-treating one by one. The ghost fell off and the witch fell off, but the skeleton went galloping, galloping, galloping on. A ghost, a witch and a skeleton went trick-or-treating one by one. The ghost fell off and the witch fell off, but the skeleton went galloping, 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 galloping on! <laughs> And the more you, you get excited with it, the more the kids will enjoy it as well, of course. Okay, put my party guests back. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm just going to now show you what I was talking about before. Uh, let me stop the share and then I can uh, share my other screen with you guys. Okay, just a moment. So these, uh, I was talking about the British Council website before. There's a lot on here for helping kids, especially with language skills. They have many flashcards. Flashcards kids tend to find boring, <laughs> so I don't usually use these as flashcards. I play a game with them. So they're usually themed, and they, here we have some Halloween flashcards here. What you should do is print them, stick them onto like a piece of cardboard or something, uh, another piece of paper to make it more solid and then cut out the, the, the words and the pictures. There's several on here, you can see different creatures from Halloween. Then you're gonna play the memory pairs game with those. So of course, memory pairs, you just turn everything face down so that you can't tell which one is which. And then they have to match up by choosing two each time, any two. For example, if they choose the picture of the spider, they have to try to remember where is the word spider. Okay, so the picture and the word go together uh, in this memory game. Each time they will discover, each time that somebody turns over another two, they will discover the position of more and then remember them, of course. If you have younger children that can't read yet, print out um, twice as many cards and just use the pictures, but still use the words to try and improve their speaking as well. Oh, you found a spider. Where's the other spider? Oh, you've got a cat. Oh, I wonder if you'll get a bat, cat, bat, they rhyme. The more you talk, the more their language skills will improve as well. Okay, so I'll just go back there. You can see where that came from. The British Council. Learn English Kids website. Uh, there's more on here. I talked to you before about, uh, there's some online word games. Not everything is available outside of the UK. Most things are, some are not, sadly. Uh, worksheets, as I said, kids don't tend to engage so well with, but if you've got children that like doing that kind of thing, go ahead, you'll find quite a lot of things in here. Okay, um, one other thing that I wanted to share with you before we finish, uh, I talked about using materials. So, for example, uh, I'm on a, a Dutch website here for buying materials, which in Dutch is stoffen. Um, so I, I searched for uh, this tool here, T-U-L-E, and I, I found all different types here in different colors that you can use to become like floating scarves. These are especially good with very young children, babies and children. Choose different colors, it's very cheap. Cut it up into small sections and you can throw them and they float to the ground very gently. They look very nice if you choose different colors and kids will really like playing with them. They put them on their heads and they're, they're see-through. They can still see through so they, they won't be afraid. Um, you can use those in many different ways which I'll hopefully talk about more ideas in the next video. So, <laughs> I hope you enjoy, enjoyed uh, today's session. Um, I'm hoping to do as well some live sessions uh, in the future and uh, then we can come together as a group, share activities and ideas that you have done with the kids you're looking after, what worked, what didn't work so well, what your kids enjoy doing. Also discuss together how you overcome some problems with language, for example, some ideas for doing, for showing rather than talking if, if your kids don't understand, things like that. And we can also um, 
maybe even do some live demonstrations of some songs, some music, uh, some crafts together. Why not? <laughs> so I'm looking forward to all the fun that's in store for us. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.